morning, brethren. Thank the Lord for bringing us together again once more to worship before Him and to bring praise and glory to His high name. Thank Sister Forrest for reminding us that although we may be battered on the outside, although our sails may show evidence of the tempest that rages around us, we have a sure rest in Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you. Yes, God. We know that he has been assailing the families that are single. Sister Yvonne, Sister Bernice, Sister Rose, our family, and others with all varied kinds of tempest, Sister Lily. But it is a sign that we are doing something right. It is evidence that we are not friends with the enemy. It is a sign that we are walking with Jesus. Sister White says, let piety and sincerity and righteousness <clears throat> grace our churches again and the fires of persecution shall be rekindled. Yes. So it's a sign that we are going in the right direction. We thank the Lord for um, these reminders, these signposts, these warnings to keep us in the way of righteousness. As we get into his word this time, let us kneel in prayer. Our eternal Father and our God. Thank you, Lord, for another Sabbath day. It is a plan of the evil one to burden us with wounds so that we are so focused on ourselves that we can't look to Jesus Christ, our Savior. But our very presence here today demonstrates his defeat. For your children have gathered before you once again to call upon your holy name. Amen. As we open the sacred pages and as we study your word, we pray that you will put our burdens aside and help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. For there is still a message to go forth to the world. Yes. There are still souls to be won. There are still the downcast to lift up Amen. and your mighty name to praise and glorify. Yes. Be with us as we open your word now. Write upon our hearts the messages that you have prepared for us. Yes. Put words in my mouth, Lord. Yes. Use me as that lump of clay. Yes. Whatever you would, your name may be glorified yes. and your children will be fed. We thank you and we bless you and we praise your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As we continue our study in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, uh, the messages are so cutting and relevant what we encounter today that from time to time we must pause and apply these messages to our daily lives and as we studied last week our study wasn't finished and as I look more onto what we will study this evening the word reminds me that God is not sitting passive he does something. And I've entitled this message today as the works of God. Jesus, when he was on earth, says in John 9 and verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me. Shall I do otherwise? No. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Last week we closed our study 
or we paused our study on the note that there is coming a morning for which there will be no night. Yes. And you better see that morning. Yes. That morning you better awake from sleep. Amen. There is also coming a night for which there will never be a morning. Amen. That night you don't want to sleep. Don't sleep that night. Skip sleeping that night. That night Jesus says, no man can work. It is finished. The Lord says, for judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. For judgment, Jesus says, I am come. That they which claim they have vision might not see. And they which see might be made blind. He wants to give vision to those who are blind. And those who claim they see, they better make sure they are seen. Because if not, they will be blind. Turn with me to St. Matthew chapter 13. Let us look at this record a little bit. St. Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to look at verses 10 through 23. What's Jesus talking about? Disciples came unto him and asked him a question. Why do you talk in parts? Why don't you talk straight? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries. Is God's kingdom a mystery? Yes. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Is God partial? No. He wants some to understand and others not to. Let us read a little more. Sister Pearlie, pick up at verse 12. Let her have a mic, please. Put one on this side as well. For whomsoever, for whomsoever have, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whomsoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Pause. Are we encountering this problem in God's church today? Yes. People who refuse to listen. Yes. Huh? Yes. Let me talk to you. When I am done, if I'm talking foolishness, discard it. But don't we see a generation that is refusing to listen just as they did to Stephen? They stopped their ears and gnashed on it with their teeth. Please come to me. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which say, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. By hearing, though they hear, they do not understand. Yeah. And seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. That I should heal them? I want to heal them. But they are blind. 
not physically, medically diagnose the blind, but spiritually they are blind and they are deaf and they cannot understand. And it doesn't make sense when we talk to people like this. It's like talking to a wall. Please proceed, sister. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Amen. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Mm -hmm. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. When, and, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in the heart. This is he which receiveth seeds by the wayside. But he that receiveth seed into the, into the stone of place, the same is he that heareth the word, and a none with joy receiveth it. Yet had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, he by and by he is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Praise God. Amen. So they all received the word, but only one set bring forth fruit. fruit. Jesus says in John chapter 15, the tree that bringeth forth, any branch that bringeth forth not fruit, is cut off. because they will not listen. They will not pay attention. They will not focus on the word, but the devil has managed to divert their attention to something else. The word of the Lord reminds us in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, where there is no vision, people perish. Where men will not see, they are bound to perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, God's people will perish. What a sad uh, record. Warning to Israel, the church, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Do not follow others into evil. Amen. Make sure that where you are walking today, you are walking with the Lord. Amen. Be steadfast, be certain. Whatever we say here at the pulpit, Take your notes. Go check it for yourselves. Search it out. But ye therefore, uh, be therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Joshua told Israel, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves down to them. A long time ago, God warned Israel not to get entangled in their system of worship. We must be distinct. We must be different. God desires a peculiar people. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers serve on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. 
and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served and were on the other side of the flood, and the gods of the Amorite in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. Who did our ancestors serve? Do you want to go back to Africa and beat the drums? Do you want to go back to Europe and join with the Druids and witchcraft? Do we want to go back to tradition and Greek philosophy and the Romans, the Romans gods? Why is it that God's Advent people is clamoring to join with Baalpia, to be like them? Things have changed. Let's plant churches. Is that what God asks us for? He says, I can't love on a thousand years, I'm not. If I were hungry, I would ask. Is it about having many churches? Is it about boasting that Adventists are now 50 million or 100 million? Is that what God asked for? Has the church become the new God? I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Sister White says, Verily we can make of a God even an idea or philosophy. You don't need a physical object to which we should bow to have a God. But God's people, there's something about idolatry that tickles our attention, that takes hold of us. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. We shall go before us. For as of this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not, or we know not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off your earrings. Those earrings we broke off, we want them back. <laughs> she was introduced to me as a new professor. She was young, very attractive. Half her thigh was showing from under her dress. It was short. Didn't desire to see it or look at it, but she was right there in front of me. And as they told me of her credentials, and that soon she will be carrying one of our courses, I won't say much detail about it. The next thing is, and she goes to your church. She is one of you. And the person introducing her has a penchant for mocking us. Not in an ugly way, but because of our complicity. Because the last time we ate together, I hope you can put the pieces together. I don't want to say too much. Follow me carefully. I'm trying to be vague. <laughs> and we sat at dinner. And when the alcohol took effect, the words were, if Mr. Forrest wasn't here, you would have your glass. But because Forrest is here, you're not having your glass. Wow. That was one joke. Of course, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to say too much, but this person um, is one of us. And now, this new person is also one of us. And somebody who is not of our faith, Catholic. She said after the conversation was over, she was right there watching, the look on my face was priceless. 
would to God she had a camera to capture me in that moment. I don't know what was on my face. But before my eyes was three chains and a short dress and anklets and earrings. Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears and the ears of your wives and your sons and your granddaughters and bring them to me. They are coming from Egypt. But we like them. You know, when we were in Egypt, we, we looked, should I say attractive? I don't know. But now we want them back. Give us the wine. Because the account, and I don't think it was a lie, is you drink it. Whenever Sinclair is not here, you drink it. So let's make God's. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears. By the way, piercing the ears is a sign of slavery. For the Lord says, if you have a slave, when the jubilee comes, he must go out free. But if he likes his master and he wants to stay and remain with his master, put his ear against a pole and punch it through with an awl and he shall be a slave forever. Yes. And all the people break off their earrings, which are in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron, and he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a carving tool after he had made it, after he had made a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, these be thy gods. It doesn't make sense. Some of what we looked at last week and the week before. The trend, uh, the, 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 the tendency, the, the degree, the path we are going doesn't make any sense. But apparently only a few of us seem to understand this. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a warring after other gods. The Lord had said, Do not. And years later, Joshua, who knew who he was dealing with, warned them not to even mention their names. Yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a warring after other gods and bowed them themselves unto them. They turned quickly. How old is Adventism? A thousand years? Five hundred years? We couldn't wait for Sister White and Joseph Bates and James White to be dead. Bam! Idolatry. Worshipping the church. Worshipping the institution. Turning our backs upon righteousness and holiness and uprightness. Turn quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in. Obeying the commandments of God. But they did not so. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a warring after their own inventions. Let's raise up churches. That's the latest talk. Let's plant churches. Went a warring after their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people insomuch that he abhorred or he despised his own inheritance. Can you imagine how Jesus feels now looking down at the Advent people with all our abortion? Every month, Andrew put out a new video asking the church about abortion. And they won't cease or desist. So you know what? God brought judgment. He brought judgment upon them and he's going to bring judgment upon us 
Joel 2 and verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, yes. and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Mm -hmm. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. If you weren't here last week, we will let you know what the trumpet signifies. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. Don't let God blow his trumpet upon you. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities, against the high towers, against. You don't want this trumpet blowing against you. And they escaped, and they that escape out of you shall remember me among the nations whither they shall be carried captives. When the trumpets are done blowing, the few that are left huh, shall remember me among the nations. Whither they shall be carried captives, slaves, slaves to sin, slaves, powerless. We are at the homeless shelter. One person needed a place to stay. My crazy wife said, come home with us. Stranger. Don't know this person from Adam. For one week in our house, she was living in the fires of hell. Something about us, something about our morning and evening worship, something about our boring food, something, there is no television, something about these people. I can't stay here. By the end of the week, Friday, with another Sabbath coming. She said, take me to the bus stop. Wow. Where are you going? Take me to the bus stop. <laughs> Three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, there she is in the homeless shelter again. I would rather be homeless than live with you elders. Captives, are you understanding? Yes. Because I am broken with their warish hearts which have departed from me and with their eyes which go a warring after their idols. Your church is boring. You have no drums. You don't get in the spirit. You're too quiet. Your voice is too gentle. Give me something that will make me jump. Give me some praise and worship. And your woman, all their dresses go down to the ankle. I can't stand that. God made these beautiful women, now we can't see them. And they shall loathe themselves for the evil which they have committed in all their abominations. Already, Elder God, if I wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist, and if I didn't know what genuine Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh Adventist Adventism is, I could never be convinced to be a Seventh-day Adventist. What I know about Seventh-day Adventists today, professed Seventh-day Adventists, it's despicable. But there is a remnant. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob. God's fire will never be extinguished. Amen. Therein lies our hope unto the mighty God. For though the people of Israel, God's church, that is what Paul says in Acts chapter 7 and verse 35, Israel was God's church in the wilderness. For though the people of Israel be as the sand of the sea, 
yet a remnant of them shall return. You can count on that remnant. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. There is a remnant. In spite of the fact that others didn't see, as we said last week, here comes Jesus, and Israel know nothing. The wise men came and inquired, what are you talking about? Could such a thing happen that God told, would tell you and not us, the high priest, his chosen leaders in Israel? You're out of your mind. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. According to thy word, for mine eyes have seen. We need eyes that see. It doesn't matter what the president sees or the leaders. He saw Jesus and recognized him. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation this morning nearing home, I want to let you know that my eyes have seen God's salvation. Because God is raising up a people, yes. a people that will stand for integrity, Amen. a people that will stand for uprightness, True. a people that is willing to do right, yes. not saying we are perfect and holy, yes. but God wants a people who are determined yes. to stand in righteousness. doesn't matter where we worship, but it matters who we worship. Amen. Our eyes must see Jesus. I don't care how the Holy Spirit tried to disguise him. He was like a root out of a dry ground. And when I look at him, there was no beauty in him to behold. Have you ever seen a root sticking out of a dry ground? Does it look good? So it doesn't matter how he's disguised. His character will betray him. He'll do good. He'll speak righteousness. He'll speak the truth. He won't murder babies. He won't go against his word. He that is wounded in the stones and as his privy member cut off should not enter the congregation of the Lord. He won't take such a man and make him an elder. And there's much more. So we are warned. Take heed, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. Take heed. Stick with the word. Stick with the dust. Say the Lord. Take heed. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that had been blind. Simeon believed. Simeon's eyes were open. Turn with me to John chapter 9. This man is born blind. So on the Sabbath day, Jesus took this blind man and he spat on the ground and made spittle. You know the story well. And he put that paste on his eyes. This is a deliberate act. Jesus could simply have said, as he had said before, receive thy sight. He didn't do that. He said, go wash. By the time he went to wash and came back, Jesus was gone. Deliberately. And now the Pharisees have come into contact with this man because everyone is praising God. He was born blind. 
The word says, but the Jews did not believe. Word of God says, take heed that there be not an evil heart among any of us of unbelief. Concerning him, that he was born blind and received this sight until they called the parents of him that had received sight. Jesus is nowhere to be found. The prejudice of Jesus is not in their way. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son? Who say he was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son. This is our son. We know that. We also know that he was born blind. Verses 18 through 20. But by what means he now seeth? We know not. Or who hath opened his eyes? We know not. Ask him yourselves. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. How many Seventh day Adventists are sitting in their chair today because they fear what other Seventh day Adventists will say about them? Huh? They fear what other church members will call them. They fear what men may say. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So who took precedence? Who was the ranking person here? The Jews or Christ? The Jews! Who takes rank today in our church? Jesus or the conference? The conference. The conference is the new God. Don't leave the conference. No matter what you do, stay on the ship. A text which doesn't apply there. Staying on the ship has to do with staying in the faith. Not with the conference. Staying with the truth. Peter confessed. So are the Christ. The son of the living God, Jesus says, on this rock will I build my church. What rock was Jesus talking about? Huh? Himself. The confession that Peter just made, you are the Christ. Did Peter last? No. Shortly after that, three times. I do not know him. The last time. He swore. If you were a Jamaican, then I would know what kind of swearing he would have used. He wasn't Jamaican, so I'm not going there. He swore. I don't know him. So it wasn't upon Peter. And it wasn't on the general conference either. Because we see what they are doing. So we must stand with Christ. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man born sin, nor his parents. Because the disciples came to him later on, in, in, sorry, earlier on in chapter 9, verse 3, saying, Was he born blind or his parents? Uh, no, no. Was, did this man sin or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus says, No. But that the works of God should be made manifest. The trials and persecution that we taste today is to the glory of God. Yes. How will you learn to trust Jesus? How will you glorify his name? Notice he hasn't taken out any of us in our sins. He has given us all time. Amen. Time to make it right. If your house is not in order, you know. But Jesus has given us time. I didn't hear anybody drop down in here in home suddenly. This man was born blind that the works of God should be made clear in him. 
Just like Lazarus, his death is designed to reveal the kingdom of heaven. I am the resurrection and the life. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Praise God. Somebody say amen out there. Amen. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Huh? Huh? I was standing in church one Sabbath. And when I look at the looseness, the woman preaching in this tight pants, in her cleavage and the other girls walking around you could practically see their naked bodies through their clothing and i said lord this something is wrong there's a spirit in this place which is at war with the spirit in me the two are not agreeing i can't do this anymore the jacket will not fit i must take it off lord please help and when that storm finally settled and the dust settled, I was up at eternal gospel. For one year, every Sabbath I cried in church. Every Sabbath I was in tears. When I consider where I was in Adventism and what I saw, which I knew nothing about. When Jesus took away the darkness, Every Sabbath, I was just glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What? Why me? Why have you done this wonderful thing for me? Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe in the Son of God? Hallelujah. Do you believe, brethren? Yes. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that they which see not, might see those of us who were blind Jesus knew you were longing to see he read your heart he knows you from the day you were born he knew who he made in the womb he came to give us sight and they which see might be made blind because they refuse stubbornness and rejection he will leave them in their blindness and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Judgment is coming in. I'm going somewhere. Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. You don't go knocking a blind man for walking into a pole. He's blind. If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remain it. I can't help you because you won't admit your sin. Sounds like something, you know? Hmm? Those who are rich and increase with goods, what do they say? I have need of nothing. But thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That was us sometimes, but now Jesus is giving us sight. Do you have eyes and not see? Do you have ears and hear not? And do you not remember? Send the Adventist people, can a man have eyes and yes, not see? Yeah. Alas, yes. But God reminds us. The law of the Lord is perfect. Yes. Don't change it. Mm -hmm. When you take something perfect and you adjust it, it becomes imperfect. Yes. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Hallelujah. Amen. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he has made in the earth. He breaketh the bow, he burneth the chariot of fire. Come, Israel, look at the works of the Lord. In the Lord do I put my trust, says his people. Oh, say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. They mock you. Flee 
to your mountain. Go hide yourself. For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string. In the local sense. And in the international arena. Elder Gordon alluded to it this morning. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. The Sunday law is coming. We have said it many times. Persecution is coming. Yes. The devil is not going to be satisfied to take out our parents and grandparents in a little from now. They're going to take out us, yes. the young ones. Yes. Knock us down. Privately, secretly, quietly, in a clandestine way. They are behind the scenes planning our destruction. Yes. And they walk beside you day by day and they <laughs> grin and tell you hi and how. We love you and they preach love. Yes. But behind the, their secret meetings, they are planning our destruction. Yes. We know it. Because God says it. Yes. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What are the foundations? <coughs> God's foundation is law, his commandments. If the foundations be destroyed, what can we do? If we take away the law, what do we have? And our Chaos. Open the prisons and let out the people. It's not right to have them locked up for stealing. There's no law. You don't kill a lion when he kills a deer. They're sitting there on their <coughs> Land Rovers and their Toyota Land Cruisers in Africa, in Kenya. Watching the lion right there and the cheetah and the jaguar right there. Killing the buffalo and the deer and the wildebeest. They don't take out their guns. They have guns. Why don't they shoot the lion? Save the deer. Well, if we have the law of the jungle, open the prison house. Set the people free. But the Lord would have us know that the Lord is in his holy temple. Thank God for the sanctuary message. Desmond Ford came out against it, but don't accept it. It's nonsense. It makes no sense. Psalm 77 verse 13. Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. Glory to God. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Yes. They can't go up there and take out the great original. It is there. Yes. One of these days it's going to be revealed. Yes. And they are going to run to the rocks and the mountains. Yes. Praise God. Um, his eyelids behold. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. He's seeing what's going on. He's keeping a record. Let good be documented by your names. Amen. In Jamaican parlance we say, I don't drink my porridge when it's hot. God has patience. He's waiting. But he's going to bring every work into judgment of every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. He tried the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hated. Upon the wicked he shall rain sneers. Not only then, but now he has done it before. He has given us a record. Fire and brimstone and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Even now. Let me show you. You think I'm joking. And when he had opened the seventh sea. There was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints. Although this refers to a particular time, in general it refers to the saints praying and pleading with God. These saints had a big problem. Rome was killing them, tearing them up in the theater, feeding them to lions and wild animals, burning them at the stakes, chopping off their heads, and their prayers ascended before God. Of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came 
with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God. Where do our prayers go, brethren? Before God, Jesus mixed it with the incense, the sweet smelling savor of his grace. He takes away the impurities and send up our prayers before God. Hallelujah. Somebody want to pray this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. It ascend before God out of the angel's hand. Thank you, Jesus. My prayers don't stop at the ceiling. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which are the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed? Hail! Hallelujah! And fire mingled with blood. Be careful how you touch me out there. Because I have a father in heaven. And he'll do something. He did then and he'll do today. Mingled with blood. And there were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt. And all the green grass burnt up. Sister Silma has a little reading for us. God does something. Hold a minute, Sister Simma. Let me see. Jesus. My bow is my bow is I'm pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Jeremiah knows what trumpet means. And Israel has sinned. They have gone into idolatry. And he knows that there among them, the Daniels and the Shadrach and the Meshach and the Abednego were praying. And God answers prayer. Yes, yes. So he's going to do something. Yes. And the man who understands prayer knows that God is going to act. Yes, my bow is my bow is I'm pain at my heart. My very heart, my heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. God is going to go at war against Israel. That's our problem today. We know God is going to act. And the one brethren are dead asleep. And stop rising with us and let us go and champion God's cause. Let him give us strength to fight his battle. Let him empower us like he did Daniel. And Shadrach, Mishiach, and Abednego. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. Seventh-day Adventists, I give you peace. And you won't learn righteousness. I will blow my trumpet. Yes. Fool yourself. Mm -hmm. Sister Silma. The first trumpet. The first angel sounded. And hail and fire followed mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees were burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up revelation 8 7. this language suggests a violent hailstorm the old testament on which the book of revelation is based gives the clue to what a hailstorm represents in prophecy in describing the invasion of the Assyrians into the land of Israel, the prophet declared, Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters overflowing, who will bring them down to the earth and with his hand, Isaiah 28, 2. Here, Isaiah likens the Assyrian invasion with a mighty hailstorm. Again, in describing the invasion of Gog and Magog, the prophet Ezekiel said, You will ascend, coming like a storm, 
covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Ezekiel 38, 9. Firstly, we can safely conclude what a, that a storm such as described in the first trumpet symbolizes a military invasion. Hail storms that fell upon Roman territory always came from the north, suggesting that this invasion would be from the northerly regions. Secondly, the symbolism also suggests the destruction of the natural environment, for the trees were burnt up, as well as all the green grass. This indicates that forests, pastures, and crops will be destroyed by the invaders. Thirdly, there was hail and fire mingled with blood, indicating carnage, the slaughter of both humans and beasts. Amen. 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 Daniel 11 verse 30 says, For the ships of Shittim shall come against him, Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. According to the word of the Lord, as a symbol of foreign oppression, the phrase of the ships of Shittim was, uh, can symbolize invaders and destroyers from any quarter. And as we apply this phrase to Rome in the context of Daniel 11.30, it offers a perfect description of the barbarian hordes that invaded and broke up the Western Roman Empire. History clearly demonstrates that four tribal groups, the Visigoths, the Huns, the Vandals, and the Herula, each made significant contribution to the final collapse of the political infrastructure of Western Rome. God would have completely obliterated it, except his work, the sealing of his children, the gathering of his saints was not done yet. We saw the destruction of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and here the attack on Rome. Why? Because they had a set of people somewhere obscured in a corner praying the prayers of the saints mingled with the incense of Jesus' grace ascended before God. When God's saints pray, things happen on Amen. earth. Amen. Are you listening to me? You have more power than you realize. Amen. Praise God. Amen. On August 24, AD 410, Alaric, Alaric sacked and plundered the city of Rome. Are you listening to me? This sacking of Rome, which had not taken place in nearly 800 years, practically impregnable, horrified the Romans. And the Roman world that exposed the weakening power of the Western Empire because they were destroying God's people. Today, we have a similar situation. What is Rome? Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, breaking pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. I beheld that the same horn made war with the saints. Evidence, they made war with the saints and prevailed against them. The fourth piece of Daniel 7 is the composite piece of Daniel chapter 13. The woman of Revelation 17, the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church system. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it in pieces. What happens when she persecutes God's saints? Psalm 11 verse 2, For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. Have they learned their lesson? 
No. They've migrated to the United States. They're doing it again. In the garb of secrecy, they're planning our destruction. <laughs> Revelation 8, verse 7, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast into the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass burnt up. When Alaric passed through, he burned the wheat, he burned the barley, he burned the, the, the orchard trees. When he was done, there was nothing to eat. The prophecy is perfect. Are you listening to me? Yes. The burning of the trees, the hail, fire mingled with blood, is not symbolic. It's literal. He blows the trumpet of war when God's people pray. Are we going to pray today? Yes. Yes. Prayer is not your enemy. No. It is your friend. Amen. You want to pray. When the devil attacks and distresses you, Sister Alicia, you want to pray. Yes. Elder Sinclair, when the devil attacks your family, you want to pray. Yes. Sister Bernice, when he comes in like a flood against you, Sister Bernice, you want to pray. Yes. Sister Rose, when the devil attacks, you want to pray. Sister Yoli, when the devil attacks, you want to pray, Sister Yoli. Yes. What are we supposed to do when the enemy comes out against us? Right. Call on God in prayer. Amen. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. Upon the golden altar which was before the throne. It doesn't stay here. It's one thing you have today. Which in a matter of seconds you can put right before God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Neither any green thing, neither any tree. But only those men which had not the seal of God in their forests. This is serious. Do you have the seal of God in your forest? When that angel come passing through. Will he see God's seal in your forehead? Do you have his seal? We have spoken about the seal before, the character of God. You can claim his character today. This week wasn't a pretty week. The devil came attacking in untold ways. Not just the fact that my wife's dad had died, but family members. Who wanted to do strange things. Oh, they are accustomed to doing this nine night and that. But this is pagan. We just spoke about it. We are Christians. The man got baptized. Why are you going to desecrate his life with these abominable practices? It was very distressing to Sister Alicia and myself. And more. When does the righteous please the wicked? So because we don't please the wicked, we don't love. When do God's commandment people do things that will please the dead? And he's coming with his sneaky attacks to have his way. And he'll do the same to you. I know he does. Because he's persistent. But you know, brethren, the Lord has given me a job. And although I wanted to be in Jamaica, I said, Lord, your business must never be put on hold. Because your children must be warned. It's a time of warning in which we live. When Moses, when God told Moses, I'll pass before you. And I will tell you my name. It's correct. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. The Lord Sinclair amplified it this morning in Sabbath school. I wasn't in here, but I heard it. 
abundant in goodness and truth. We rob God when we are stingy. We rob God when we don't feed the hungry. We rob God. Let them come into your house and say, Sister Sands, I can't stay here. Your place is too boring. You don't have any vibes. I must go back to the street. But let them not stay. You see that Sister Perlene over there? She saw me in the rain and she wouldn't even give me a shelter. So today, brethren, today we are going to pray because we need to have the seal of God. It's not going to stay in the persecuting power. Job said, cursed be the day that I was born, but I know that I shall see God in my flesh. I shall see him. You won't see him for me. I know that my Redeemer is. Yeah. So although the devil may attack and although he may try to cause chaos but we will band together yeah. we will stick more closely together we will search ourselves and make sure that God is reproducing his character in us Amen. the seal of God is itself the seal of God is settling down into the truth so that we cannot be moved Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sister Alicia, sing a song for us, please. We are going to pray today. And Elder Sinclair, Elder Gordon, come. We have to pray for God's people. I'm going away. Last year I prayed a strange prayer. When David Gates made his prediction, before I listened to it carefully, I said, Lord, if something is wrapped in mystery here that we are not seeing, because I know David Gates to be a sound man. I want you to just pluck me out of the country at the beginning of April. <laughs> I never planned that trip. Now I have this strange trip plucking me out of the United States of America at the beginning of April. I don't know. But if per chance God doesn't bring me back, I want it said that we made a plan. To meet on the other side, yes. under the tree of life. Amen. That's all I ask of you. Yes. If you never give me anything, I want to be there. Let's eat some East Indian mangoes under the oh, tree yes. of life. Oh, yes. So let us pray. Let's leave the future. Loving Father, again we give you thanks for the reminder that you are a God that still works. Amen. Loving Father, as the storms of life buffers your people we can take comfort knowing that you still work for your people yes. loving father we know we can come for you for comfort yes. we know we can depend on you for strength we know that we our promises are true we know, O oh God, that if we place our confidence in you, that we will be victorious. Yes. Loving Father, the sting of death has buffered many of your people here in this small congregation this week, last week, and the week that has passed. We can't even remember last Sabbath, Brother Henry, Brother Henry, young Brother Henry was sitting in church when the call came. Your stepfather had just died. Mm -hmm. Loving Lord, the enemy of soul is doing so much. Want to disturb the peace of your people. Yes. But loving Father, we know that we can trust in you. Yes, we know that you can and will calm the storm. And we thank you for the reminder today. So loving Father, as death as sickness, 
as financial troubles and all the other variables that the enemy of soul sends. Loving Father, help us not to give up on our confidence in you. That we have the evidence that you rose from the dead. Yes. You ascended back to heaven and you're sitting at the right hand of the Father Amen. interceding for your children. Amen. Loving Father, give us that confidence in you. Help our faith not to be shaken even when loved ones from our own bloodline family wants us to please the enemy of souls. Help us to be strong. Amen. Loving Lord, help us not to fear the consequences that we will have to face in standing up to honor you. Amen. Help us, Lord, that we will prefer to honor God than to honor man. Yes, Lord. Loving Lord, when others want us to call wrong right, we ask that you will give us the strength to say, oh no. Yes. Bless this small congregation. Comfort those who are mourning. Provide financial uh, stability that things can be worked out to bring the honor and the glory to thy high and holy name. Yes, Loving Father, hear our feeble prayers today. Lord, as we close this prayer, as I close this prayer, the scripture reminds us about the sting of death. Yes. But the scripture reminds us also that you will put an end to death. Amen. Amen. So Lord, help us not to fear death. But give us a hatred for sin. Amen. Lord, your people, we are scared of death. We're scared of cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, more than how we should have a disdain for sin. Lord, help us to understand that if sin is found in our lives, that will separate us from you eternally. So give us a disdain for sin. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus, the altar, the finisher of our faith. Which in the precious and mighty name of Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, as we remain in the most holy of holies, asking once again for Jesus to, to see in the behalf of our prayers. I'm reminded of so many scriptures, O oh Lord. But one is that you have said in Matthew, as I believe it's Matthew 10 and 34, that I've come not to bring peace, man on earth, but to set variance with the soul. Mm -hmm. And Father, this is a time which we're beginning to see that as you are putting those that are making decisions for you to sleep, that the devil is angry and he's like a roaring lion and he's raising up other family members to fight against your presence amongst your people. And as I have seen in my past experience, and I know many of us here are going through the same thing, he is going to be more persistent now to cause chaos within the family circle. In within our immediate houses, he's bringing sickness and diseases to plague us and to help us to doubt you, O oh Lord. But Jesus being the great physician, we can see now that he is once again getting ready to bring healing into our beings, into our lives. And so, Father, we want to pray for those again that are going home and going to visit family that you put a hedge of protection around their minds, their bodies. Yes, and that, Father, that you're going to give them righteous indignation to speak yes. the words of truth. Yes. Regardless of how it's going to be received, we pray that their hearts will be open to see the workings of Christ. Yes. But if not, O oh Lord, we know what the results are, and they know too. Yes. But I pray this morning for a power to be given to Brother Ford. Yes. 
I believe that this is one of the many trips that you're going to plan for him to speak to our people. Yes. Bringing him back for him to do the same thing along with Alicia. Amen. And for each and every one of us, Lord, Lord, that we need not to spare crying this loud crying message. The three angels' messages are designed to separate us from the world. Amen. And so now we see, we're talking about it, so we need not to fear what's coming. We just need to speak it and let you do the rest. Amen. And so, Father, I want to thank you this morning for this little small company. I want to praise your holy name for the blood that was shed on Calvary, which once again we need to pray this morning for the outpouring of the latter rain. Amen. That means, Lord, that we have to lay self in the dust. We need to forget about those things that easily beset us. Amen. That has caused us to take one step forward and three steps backwards <coughs> with our sin condition. We need to leave it on the altar this morning and have you to once again do the work that you started upon our hearts. That you would even bring us to almost a point of acceptance and finishing today. And so these things I want to praise you and thank you for with our company. I want to pray for our wayward children. Yes. And I know that when they get back to Jamaica, wherever they're going, there's many wayward children that they would see, that they would have a word of encouragement for them. These things we're praying for within our family circles in no other name other than the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless your waiting congregation. Comfort that we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen.